Well, so here's the thing. We talked about you know new versions of Windows coming out and changing things. This um, this kind of story was basically uh, started with with that new version of Windows, version 10 586, I believe, is the new version of Windows 10 that was just released. Um, and if you remember back to when Skylake was first announced at IDF. Intel talked about a technology and a feature called Speed Shift, which is uh, basically takes the capability of the processor to change P states, to change its clock speed based on the workload, and it takes some of the control away from the operating system and puts it on the processor hardware itself. Um, mm -hmm. That in and of its, you know, by itself, maybe doesn't sound very interesting or very useful. Um, but you'd but be wrong. <laughs> you would be wrong, as it turns out, right? So, I mean, the idea is pretty simple, right? So uh, you start at a, at a low clock speed because you want to run at low power and high efficiency. Uh, and mm -hmm. as the work increases the, that the operating system or the application is asking the processor to do, the processor kind of jumps up in speed up until it either meets some threshold where it's getting the performance done and the time it's supposed to and or um, when it meets its it's, it's maximum, whether it be for thermal throttling sure. or it's physical clock speed limits or whatever it happens to be. Um, the problem is with Windows, that process would take some time. It would send some work to the processor, judge how the performance is going, and then say, okay, let's adjust performance again, wait and see how the performance is going, and then you know maybe tell it to adjust one more time. Um, and that could take, depending on the platform and the, and the workload, anywhere from 60 to 100 milliseconds or something like that for it to go from its full idle to its full clock speed. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, right? You're talking but about a tenth of a second. Good. Yeah. I, those tenths of a second add up, though. It one does, by one by right? one. So the idea of speed shift is that the processor itself now is able to say, hey, I mm -hmm. know what my workload is. Uh, and I think this is going to be a task that we can get done quickly, but is also important. So we're going to jack up the speed very quickly. Uh, and it's able to do that with speed shift. And it can do it um, in our testing 10 times faster. It can jump from its idle speed to its maximum clock speed 10 times faster uh, than before speed shift was actually enabled in the operating system. So if cool. you look down at uh, the, the next graph here, this is a, a custom application. It was actually coded by Intel. We compiled it um, that simulates a workload and then mm -hmm. measures clock speed accordingly. And if you scroll down one more to the next graph, it kind of zooms in on the interesting part where the green line represents uh, the previous version of Windows and the blue line represents the new version, the 10586. And you can see there is what we're measuring is clock speed over time. And on the left-hand side, the, the green line starts out at about 800 megahertz and it takes until about 30 milliseconds to jump up to about two gigahertz and it takes 60 plus milliseconds to jump up to the, three, uh, the full three gigahertz. The blue line, however, represents the same exact hardware with the new version of Windows and speed shift enabled where that happens at about six milliseconds. So you're getting from 60 down to six milliseconds uh, of time. And that's, that's a pretty drastic <laughs> improvement, right? And if you scroll out to the next there's, graph, it shows the same thing on Lenovo Yoga 900, same kind of hardware, though. There's part of me that wants to snark and be like, you know, and at the end of the year, you saved yourself several seconds and perhaps even minutes. But the reality is, in terms of, you know, perception, um, it's actually really cool because a lot of little things add up to make, uh, to give your you the idea that your computer is not particularly fast or could be faster, and and right. that's a huge, huge but reduction. If you remember, if you remember back in, to like when we were talking about SSDs, right? Mm -hmm. SSDs being like, hey, if you put an SSD in your computer, it's going to feel this much faster. Um, mm -hmm. It's the same idea, right? Your system wasn't necessarily doing things like opening web browsers um, you know, or, or opening up new web pages in browsers particularly faster, but the snappiness of everything made it feel like a whole new computer. This is right. a similar idea, a much less dramatic impact, but still a similar style of impact. Um, the idea, like the kind of implementation model for this is touchscreen devices in particular, right? So if you've got, like I've got the Surface Book here, right? The idea is, is that when you touch the screen, you want it to respond immediately. And if you have a, a web page open like uh, PCPro.com or TheVerge.com, something that has a lot of stuff on it, maybe it has flash on it, maybe it has a lot of sure. overlays on it. Um, when you want to scroll up that page, you want it to respond immediately. And it can do that better when it's running at a higher clock speed. And that's been one of Intel's uh, kind of goals talking to the performance mm -hmm. team for over the last several years. It's like, look, we 
We know that uh, in the mobile space, if you look at iPads and, and iPhones, that the user experience has been very different, right? When you when you use an iPad, it's not it's not a, a wildly faster product than some of the Android tablets, but it just feels more responsive. And because of that, right. you get a better impression of it. So they're trying to do the same thing in Android. Now they're trying to do the same thing in Windows. If you look down at the article, uh, if you skip, like we looked at a couple of standard benchmarks, sure. they, they show some improvements, but that's not really that interesting. Uh, it does show <laughs> you that like some tasks will be completed faster because you <laughs> get up to that clock speed. But in reality, you're really only talking about you know, that 60, that 50 to 60 millisecond time difference, right? Because you're still it's getting the, the same clock speed eventually. It's just how fast it gets there. It's the touch latency on the Surface Book where it really starts to look interesting. Because it, it's yeah. funny, with one of the things that's, one of the things that's really interesting, for example, you know, Steam operating system kind of really picks up uh, and the Steam, Steam boxes start hitting it. Ars Technica kind of published something we all knew was coming, which is like, oh, you know, Steam boxes aren't as fast as Windows machine and, and, and Windows machines, and a big part of that is there's been so much engineering prowess uh, and resources thrown at figuring out what makes an operating system feel faster, and then dumping that on top of Windows. And this is something where you know, oh, 158.1 milliseconds and 91.5, boy, milliseconds, that's not a lot of time. But in something that is as tactile. Uh, as dealing with your response, um, you know, you know, finger motion to actual pigment, uh, pixel movement, um, you know, click to clunk, that's a huge difference. That's a 72% improvement. That is a, you know, that's going to make the whole machine feel like it's faster. Um, right. And, and actually, they, we, I did a video of this for, to, mm -hmm. so, to kind of go with the story. And in that video, you'll see some clips of, you know, what we used to test the process was simple. I used my iPhone 6S that could do 240 frames per second video in a stationary point. And I basically loaded up a page, scrolled four or five times, repeated that test three or four times, uh, measured it before the update and then after the update, mm -hmm. and then... You count the frames in between, and that's where you come up with the math that you see on that graph. And that's a, that's a significant difference. And I will say, having had the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book side by side with each other, um, the, the, the difference was noticeable. It wasn't just measurable. It was noticeable. Mm -hmm. Like, I could tell a difference when one was updated and one wasn't. And you don't really get, you know, when we talk about performance improvements, uh, you know, going from Haswell to Broadwell to Skylake, a lot of times we can't say that. Like, okay, if you're doing right. uh, encoding tasks, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be faster, right? And a lot of times we don't get to say you will notice a difference. I think if you are using a mobile device with Skylake, uh, that has a touchscreen interface and even a mouse input, you're still going to have the same thing, but it may, may feel a little bit less um, like kind of direct to you. Um, you will, you will be able to see and feel uh, a difference with this when you, when you do that upgrade and all you have to do, and it's, and if you have a Skylake machine, it's already kind of built into it. It's already part of it. You just have to upgrade to the version of windows that supports it now. That's a good thing, not yeah. having to upgrade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And, 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 it's, and it's something that will, does apply to desktop users as well. Um, mm -hmm. Though the benefit to them is much, maybe, much, maybe less dramatic, right? Because it's, it's okay for PCs that are desktops to be more, right. you know, kind of less uh, concerned about power delivery, right, and, and efficiency. Um, but they still do that. Everything still throttles down to its base clock speed and then moves up. But, you know, obviously the benefits for a mobile platform are much more obvious, right? You want it to be at that minimum for as long as possible. But when you interact with it, you want it to spike up. And if it's going to go all the way up to three gigahertz, you might as well get it up there faster so that it will come back down faster as well. So I, I was, I came away more impressed with speed shift as a technology and the update for it than I really expected to, mm -hmm. um, you know, so it, it, it's to me, it's a that's another a good reason. thing. That's rare and unusual and good. That's true. <laughs> You're right. You are right. Um, the for me, it's like, well, okay, does this make me want to? So I have a Broadwell notebook now. Does it make me want to upgrade to a Skylake? I, I don't know if it, if it would change my mind that dramatically um, to to go one way or the other. But it does say, okay, if I'm buying a new laptop now and I can get 
a Skylake one and a Broadwell one for a, equivalent prices, a hundred bucks difference or something like that, then f to me, sure. that added benefit, uh, especially for like a two in one device is, is, is definitely a, a noteworthy feature to have in there. So I'm a little confused why like Microsoft didn't mention it at all. Like it wasn't part of their update release notes. Intel didn't really talk about it at all. I just kind of had like a little note passed my way. It's like, Hey, you might want to check, uh, build 10, 586, uh, for some speed shift additions there. I was like, okay, all right, I'll take a look. And sure enough, I did. And it was neat and worked well, not just, not just there. So that's, it is a positive thing that, you know, we don't get to see very often. I know. I'm just, I'm, I'm charmed watching you like, oh, this thing, it did what it was supposed to do. And it wasn't mostly hyperbole. And I noticed it. And that was kind of awesome and weird and unsettling. And why doesn't this happen more often? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Why doesn't this happen more often is a very fair, valid, valid concern. So.